In this video, I'm going to be explaining the concept of proxies in the context of system design. Uh, so I'm going to be going over the two main types of proxies, the forward proxy and the reverse proxy. Now, these two types of proxies are extremely useful in system design for things like load balancing and traffic shaping. And we're going to see a little bit more of that in a few moments. So first of all, what is a proxy? Uh, so a proxy can be thought of as a means to conceal a computer's identity during a network communication. So what does that even mean? Like that's a whole load of nonsense. Let's explain what that means through a practical example. And I'm going to scroll down here to some images of Canada and the United States that I have here. So let's take a hypothetical example here. So in this example, we have a map of Canada and the United States. Uh, and I live approximately right here in Canada. And here I am, let's just draw an arrow. So it's very, very clear that this is me. Let's round that out. Uh, and say in this example, I really, really want to watch the American version of Netflix. So this American version of Netflix is what I want to watch. Uh, and if you don't know much about how Netflix enforces their content policies, uh, it's usually by, by country. So if you live in Canada, in my case, then you can only watch the Canadian version. If you live in America, you can only watch the American version. Um, so those are generally the rules, okay? So if I try to communicate directly with the Netflix servers that are in the United States, this is not gonna work because Netflix's servers are gonna see that my ISP, my IP address originates from Canada here. Uh, so they're gonna reject this traffic. So I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, so how can I get around this? How can I trick Netflix's servers into thinking that I actually am somewhere, you know, over here in the United States? So that's the, the basic idea of proxying. It's hiding your identity. So let's, let's keep on running with this example and explain exactly how it works. So say I have a friend over here in the West Coast of the United States, and this is Bob, my good friend, Bob. And Bob here is a willing participant in this scheme. And he is willing to let me configure his machine to, to set it up and effectively make it act as my proxy. Um, so now once Bob kind of configures his machine in a very specific way, what we can instead do here, now instead of me calling Netflix's servers directly, what we can instead do is forward my traffic directly to Bob and then Bob, due to the, the configuration that he has on his machine, is going to automatically forward his traffic to Netflix. So I am the source here, me. I am the originator of the traffic. And Bob is the willing participant that is acting as kind of a, an abstraction layer in this sense. So from Netflix's perspective, this blue arrow looks like it's coming from Bob but it's really coming from me in Canada. But Netflix has no idea here. From Netflix's perspective, this is all looking like the traffic is all coming from Bob. So again, the data is originally coming from me. Or the request is originally coming from me over in Canada. Bob is kind of the host here in this scheme. He's forwarding his traffic to Netflix. Netflix thinks the traffic is coming just from Bob and not from me, therefore returns the responses and forwards all that information back to me over here in Canada. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is is the basic idea of the forward, forward proxy, the forward proxy. So other than being like a pretty cool idea and like kind of neat that you can hide your identity in this way, there's not really too much application in the context of system design. The, the useful properties of like identity concealment really start to shine when you look at this through the lens of the reverse proxy, which is it kind of flips this problem on its head. So it changes perspective. And that's one thing I'm going to repeat for you a couple times. Proxies, the two types of proxies, the forward and the reverse proxy are all about perspective. So in this forward proxy example, the perspective is me, the originator of the call. But in the reverse proxy example, it's going to be from the server perspective. So let's explain what that means here through a second example. So the reverse proxy, like I said, it really flips this problem around. So we look at this from the server perspective. Uh, so let's take a, another example here. And let's say that again, I am Netflix here. We're taking the perspective of the Netflix servers. So we are the, the engineers, so to speak, of Netflix. Uh, and I need to have thousands of machines available to take requests whenever a user visits the Netflix.com website. So let's say that this symbol here, this icon is symbolizing the Netflix.com website. Uh, and say we have, let's get a different color. Let's say we have like lots of users over here. 
There's lots of us and we all want to kind of interact with Netflix.com uh, in order to, to watch our favorite movies. And then over here on the right, I have a whole bunch of machines, a whole bunch of uh, servers that are on standby and ready to receive traffic okay and these guys all have their ip addresses so x.x.x.x .x .x .x, whatever and each one of these have their individual ip addresses so the way that this is set up this netflix.com domain or this netflix.com load balancer in this case acts as the single endpoint for traffic that gets forwarded to all of these different machines so for example when a request comes through here let's actually take a different color to explain this let's take red so when a request comes from this user here and hits netflix.com the netflix.com load balancer in this case would forward traffic to one of these hosts one of them that maybe um, there's many different load balancing techniques but uh, could be round robin could be totally random uh, so the idea is here that we have a single domain so a single domain netflix.com and we are hiding the identity of all of these different servers all of these different servers are unknown from the client perspective so the client over here the client has no idea that it's talking to each of these one individual servers or you know it's only talking to one of them at a time but from the client perspective so the client perspective all it knows is that it is talking to the netflix.com load balancer which is this guy in the middle here uh, so this is the idea of the reverse proxy it's the idea that you can hide the identity of these machines here or over on the right from your callers and in this example we looked at why it's useful through the lens of load balancing but there's a whole bunch of different implications here of this concept in general the idea that we can have a mapping of one domain to all of these other individual machines means we can also do other things like shifting away traffic. So behind the scenes, we can kind of start taking out machines from this load balancers endpoint and maybe use those machines for a different application or just kind of descale so that uh, we only have two machines left in this fleet. But from the client perspective, the client has no idea any of this is happening. And this property, which makes it so that you have this single endpoint that abstracts away the identities of the destination machines who actually kind of process the, the requests, this is a very, very important property that unlocks a whole bunch of different applications in system design. So to recap the ideas here, the concept of a proxy is about concealing identity. And there's two types, the forward and the reverse. Forward is when you take the perspective of the client and hide your identity from the server. And reverse is when you take the perspective of the server and hide your identity from the client. So if you found this video useful, check out the one here on the right about load balancing. I think it pairs very, very well with this video. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.